Ollie Jarvis in the 77 Mazda on that inside line. Elio Castro Neves is making his intention clear, isn't he? He kind of <laughs> he kind of felt ripped off yesterday. He wanted the pole position and missed it narrowly. And he's kind of edging Ollie Jarvis towards this unique starting position here at Mid-Ohio on the back straight. But it will be Jarvis who dictates the start. Elio Castro Neves is looking racy. Here oh, goes Jarvis. He gets bogged down. Jarvis gets that jump and Dane Cameron goes with him from the inside of the second row. Watch for that bright red and white Action Express. Wheelan Engineering Cadillac, he goes side by side with Elio and takes the position away between the two Brazilians who hit here in qualifying yesterday. Castro Neves and spins! The other Mazda gets sideways. Castro Neves is in the middle of this. Ryan hunter Ray, welcome back to DPI. Wow, up front, there's contact, there's more contact. This continues. This has not been a great start for Elio Castro Neves. Elio's got big damage on the right front there. He tried to time the start out, mistimed it because of that, put himself in a compromised position, tried to be aggressive from there. Now he's got a lot of damage. He's probably going to have to come into the pits right here. Well, Elio was trying to get the jump, and then he suddenly got swamped there by Jarvis, the pull sitter, and Cameron. Then you see the two cars coming together there. Elio's trying to recover, AJ. Yeah, once he does that, he gets the left sides in the grass. Then he makes contact with the Mazda, goes down in here, with, going in the next corner, makes contact with the five car. But yeah, see a little bit of damage there. See the 10 car completely yeah. sideways and That's got straightened not, up again. That wasn't too bad, but because of that, there's a big chain reaction back here in the GTD field. Oh. Huge contact with the Turner Motorsports BMW. Well, the first one is traffic management. You saw it there. This is such a tight racetrack. Oli Job has just got balked a little bit. Dane Cameron was through in the flash. Then the undercut versus the overcut. That's whether you pit first versus second. If you do the undercut, you're going to come out. But on cold tires and there's cool temperatures here today, can you get them up to speed quickly versus someone staying out on hot rubber? Then keep the grip. The keel and the carousel really punishes those left side tires. Hey, AJ, what did you think of that pass for the lead? Pretty slick from Dane Cameron. Well, this is what we were just talking about. Traffic. Dane Cameron used the traffic perfectly. Uses the 74 here as a pick. Gets under, Ollie Jarvis makes the move to the lead. Well, he was frustrated after qualifying with the number 10 car that he felt balked him on a couple of his quick laps here yesterday. He wants the pole. He's on form right now. He's coming off a GT3 victory last week for Acura, and he wants to get their first victory. They've been very frustrated. Led seven races here in JPM last year, but still yet to see victory lane. Yeah, and a, just a, a great start from Trent Hinman. Started ninth. Amongst all that, thing, all the stuff that was happening up front, was able to pick his way up to second here, putting a lot of pressure on Richard Highstand for the lead. Talking to Trent, they were really happy with the car. Took a gamble, as I said, in qualifying. Makes the move, goes to the outside in, clears them around the outside before they enter the carousel here. Last year, this car was so close to winning the race, finished in second. So. Obviously, this Acura is fast again. However, here at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course last year, Cadillac teams were locked off the podium. It was an Acura Team Penske 1-2, followed by Mazda Team Yoast. Will we see that again this year? Well, at the moment, it's following suit. Well, it's certainly been a rare sight, but right now it seems like the Mazdas and the Acuras certainly have the pace. The closest Cadillac to their pace right now is Pippo Durrani. He's ran a 113-1 compared to Jarvis's fast lap of 112.4, but you got guys like Van der Zander running laps in the 14 range. That's a massive delta. Yes, but something we really need to pay attention to, this is the first consistent dry running we've had all weekend. So this track, over the next two hours and 18 minutes, is going to go through a lot of changes. We can already see rubber getting laid down in the background there. These cars are going to start to handle differently. So if you got a car that's good now on a clean racetrack, as the rubber builds up, you really have to pay attention to what's going to happen to your race car. Porsche, what momentum they have. Three poles in a row coming into this race. They won the last round at Long Beach. They won the race at Sebring. They just clinched the World Endurance Championship yesterday at Spa, Frankishaw. So the car has really performed. The team is ticking all of the boxes right now. Yeah, that's really been the key there. It's, it's whether they've had the pace at certain races, they've taken advantage of it, or a place like Sebring, where the Fords definitely had an advantage on them. The team played some good strategy. Lawrence Van Thorn and all the Porsche drivers have really gotten up on the wheel and just kind of gotten after it. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Tommy Milner had a great start. He started fourth amongst everything that was happening. Same thing as in the GTD class. Tommy Milner was able to jump the first three spots there and get to the leads. Whether it was Dane Cameron's in laps or Juan Pablo Montoya's out laps, 
but they've gained an extra two seconds over the 77 of Ollie Jarvis. It was around about a seven second advantage at the time of pitting when Jarvis came to pit lane. It's now out to 9.6 on Toya over Jarvis. So, advantage, Penske, look at this fight going on here. The Wheel and Engineering Cadillac and Ryan hunter Ray. 31 cars, one lap more tyre temperature in, might make that pit stop a little bit sooner. So, Ryan hunter Ray just trying to get these Michelins up to temp. Still relatively cooler, even we're seeing nice sunny skies right now. Side by side here is Albuquerque now behind the wheel. The Mustang sampling entry and Ricky Taylor with that damage still flapping there in the breeze down the back straightaway. Fantastic move by Ollie just reading that traffic. He cut two seconds out of the lead on Montour in basically half a lap. Look at the stack up here through the keyhole. Contact there between the That's Compass the McLaren and Parker Chase in the Starwalks Audi coming out of the keyhole. Take another look at it. See here, the, the McLaren runs just a little wide, but to do a diamond, oh, Parker no, Chase thought, no. hey, that door's open for me. It, it wasn't. I don't think anyone even turned the handle, let alone open the door. So coming in here to the carousel, and it's just, it's a traffic jam, and that's what's allowed Jarvis to bridge the gap to Montoya. See, Jarvis gets a run here. Juan gets stuck behind all that traffic. He makes a quick, instinctive move gets to the lead here we saw that frustration right on the opening lap but Dan Cameron <laughs> was pretty keen to get to the front quickly oh, oh damage the 33 Riley Mercedes and that's your own Bleaker Molen on board who cannot see a thing it's gonna be a long lap back to the pits to do it safely good way to get on get wins on TV though yeah <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't like it that way he is a long way from home JDC Miller car up ahead and the 10. Jerome just gets in there super deep. I think he thought that prototype would clear the corner. Even though these uh, GT3 cars have ABS. Let's go on board and listen. Oh, just misjudged it. Right in the back of Misha Goikberg. Just misjudged it. Drone wouldn't have made the corner. He would, he would have found the fence he was in so deep if Goikberg wasn't there. This oh, is good touch oh. there. This is for the lead of class. Pardon me, I take that back. That's Milner in the Bamba. Garcia is leading the GTLM class. So this is for second and third. And Milner growing impatient with Earl Bamba. So Antonio Garcia leads this class. You're looking at second and third. Porsche versus Corvette. And there's only one point in this championship battle as they run right now. Bamba and Vantor over Garcia and Magnussen. But we'll update that as we get going. Still a long way to go in this race. One hour, 40 minutes here at Mid-Ohio. His fast lap is over three tenths quicker than second place, which is the Lexus of Jack Hawksworth. But it's, I think, about another half a second quicker than the rest of the field. So they definitely have a lot of speed in that Acura right now. Meanwhile, in GTLM, it's Antonio Garcia who leads the way in the factory Corvette. Well, Calvin rightly weaves in Europe into that statement because this class is one that is really gathering momentum in Europe. I believe it's 19 of the LMP2 class cars entered for the next Monza race. And so as they are ready in Europe to really adopt this car and continue to adopting it, working a little bit to gain the momentum here. JPM is ready, comfortable in his own shoes, comfortable out front, having taken uh, over from the to having taken over early in the race. Cars handling well, they've been down pit road twice. They will need to stop one more time. Looking good right now, Kev. And then it's the Mazdas running second and third, but it's the 77 team Yost Mazda that has the, still the chance to win. And problems for the DPI of Core Autosport, the 54 of Colin Brown is beached. That's and effectively known as China Beach. Lee. Yeah. It's a End big one. Of the back straight, turn four. And this is the first yellow that we have seen today. First caution of the race. Let's go racing here at Mid-Ohio. JPM got a phenomenal jump on Nunez. He really did. Now it's all about that load through turn one. JPM eased off a little bit. Nunez has to do the same thing. They just can't get the grip right now. You see Montoya weaving around here. Maybe he's picked up a little bit of the clag from the edge of the road. Both those cars look to be in trouble grip-wise. I don't know, JP was shot out of a cannon. He's so good on cold tires. Tristan Nunez, it seems like this Mazda has struggled the first couple of laps out of every pit stop. Now on cold tires on this restart. Got to defend against the other Team Penske car that's a lap down to have any shot to go win this race. You, 
Danny give him a Up on the ball. curb, he fills that gap. <laughs> oh, what a pass. Awesome. Moves him out of the way. Tandy up to third, trying to chase down Garcia now for second. Porsche one and three, just like that. He stuck his foot in the door right about here. Gave him a little bump, oh, a little bump. got inside. Yeah. Now he's there, run him off the racetrack, clear, gone. Oh, Ooh. Scott Hargrove hard into the wall in turn one. That is wow. big, that is fast. What a shame for the Faf. Porsche and Scott Hargrove because they were having a phenomenal run. Yeah. Here's Montoya. It is so close the difference between going another lap or not. The GTD guys will have to, but Team Penske won. Pablo Montoya, Dane Cameron win Mid Ohio. The Acura Sports Car Challenge is won by an Acura. Woo! The pressure relief of that group, but it's not off of these two teams right now. Look at Farnbucker. He's in the draft. He's hunting. Inside, That's inside, no. Hawksworth always runs a little wide here in the keyhole, but then shuts the door. Beautiful. He's not manipulating his line at all. He's just letting it run that radius and keep the speed flowing through the apex. You know what? Farmark Farmark has got to run. He's closer than he's ever been. Hawksworth will defend on the inside. Hawksworth may get a tap, but Mario's going to go oh, around the outside. Hawksworth won't he's not let him give it out there. He's he not going to give it. No there. way. Hawksworth has sustained this pressure beautifully. And Mario Farnbach has thrown everything he possibly could. He's sideways, he's used it up. That might have been his best opportunity here. He's gonna have one more shot. Oh, he's sideways off of turn nine. Hawksworth so cool under pressure though, AJ. He just maintained that balance, that poise to bring it home. Jack Hawksworth. Richard Highstand, Highstand put it on the pole. Farnbacher almost throws it into the mud. It's going to be back-to-back -back victories for Lexus, but the first victory in IMSA competition for Ain Vassar Sullivan. What a way to do it. Jimmy Vassar, James Sullivan, Richard Highstand there who put it on the pole and opened up the first stint. Hands over to Jack Hawksworth, and they've got victory at Mid-Ohio. What a race. And in GTLM, Earl Bamber and Lawrence Van Tor go back to back, Long Beach and Mid Ohio to maintain the points lead in GTLM. Hey, Motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.